the centuries, Christians in Ripon have believed that this crypt in the cathedral is the same shape and size as the tomb from which Jesus rose on that first Easter day. And to help us retell the Easter story tonight, we have with us two well-known actors, Kevin Waitley, and someone who got to know North Yorkshire very well during the filming of Heartbeat, Kasia Pelka. But first, that great Easter hymn, The Strife Is O'er, The Battle's Done. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead.
The disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking that he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As my Father has sent me, so I am sending you. With that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those that have not seen 
and yet have believed. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking together about everything that had happened. And as they were talking and discussing with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He said, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He is a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. What is more, this is the third day since these things took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they said to him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. And so he went in to stay with them.
When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us?
Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. When they landed, they saw a fire burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The story that we've been recalling today happened 2,000 years ago, and seven centuries later it inspired St. Wilfrid to found this great cathedral. And today, Easter Day, Christians around the world are still celebrating the miracle of the empty tomb. From all of us on Songs of Praise, have a wonderful Easter.
pays tribute to former presenter Sari Seacombe at the earlier time of 5.40. And tonight on BBC One, every man recalls his life and career at 20 past 10.